Hello everyone, my name is Chua Kiman. You can call me Kiman. I'm from the University of Malaysia, Sarawak. And I'm also part of the creative culture team in the university. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you how I reach out to teachers across Malaysia, especially in Sarawak, in helping them to cope with the transition from in-person teaching or face-to-face -face teaching to online learning or remote teaching. I would also be sharing how I convince them in using gamification and playful learning in the delivery of online learning. Just to give you a bit of context, the um, movement control order in Malaysia was introduced starting 18 March 2020. It's a different kind of lockdown, but essentially schools were closed and teachers were uh, asked or were required to adopt online teaching or online learning during this uh, period of time. And um, at a certain point uh, towards the end of last year, the online teaching or online learning term were, were changed to home-based learning. Anyhow, but essentially students were still uh, required to learn from home most of the time, even though schools are slowly reopening, but essentially the teaching and learning are still taking place online. So what happened was due to this sudden shift from in-person teaching to online learning or remote teaching, uh, teachers were caught off guard, most of them, especially at the primary school level because they were just not ready and they were not really well trained on online pedagogy as well as online tools. So what happened was you can see them you know, scrambling and then just try out whatever they can and following what their peers are doing. For example, a lot of them were actually using WhatsApp as a medium of teaching where they just snap photos of textbook or workbook and then put it on the WhatsApp group hoping that the parents would be guiding uh, the children on how to complete the task or homework. But we know that it was not really effective. So uh, during the first one month of uh, MCO, or start from March to April last year, I also noticed that the administrative support or any resources or support given were not really well coordinated. Meaning to say, you have different people instructing different things or different states are doing different uh, ways of uh, helping teachers to cope with remote teaching. So I saw this problem and a lot of teachers were also engaging or reaching out to me uh, in a way asking for help. So I thought why not I came, uh, you know, why not I come up with a better solution or a better uh, coordinated measure in helping uh, the teachers. So what happened was I came up with some strategies and the first one was I created a dedicated channel uh, on YouTube with tutorial videos. So I have a series of uh, videos helping teachers to learn step by step on how to use certain tools, especially the uh, Google Classroom because that is the designated uh, platform by the Ministry of Education Malaysia. So the ministry actually require teacher to make use of Google Classroom as much as they can, despite uh, some location or some areas in Malaysia, like in Sarawak, a lot of remote areas were uh, rather disconnected in a way because the connectivity level is so low. But what happened is they are still encouraged to use it uh, and also use other ways. So I also conducted webinars and small group coaching session. I have a lot of one-to-one -one session as well, to be honest. Uh, teachers coming to me and we kind of uh, help each other to, to see what can be done. For example, in remote schools or in uh, rural areas, a teacher may need to use a different approach uh, instead of depending on the online tools. Um, I also create a safe space for teachers to voice their concern and problem. I have a WhatsApp group specifically for teachers who are willing to, to share and also to voice out their, the, their, the problems, the problems that they face in schools or even in teaching and learning. So I think it's quite good because from there, uh, I get the ideas of what to do with my videos, especially, and also the webinar. So I, if I notice that a lot of teachers are complaining on certain issue, I created uh, a video for that or even I, I conducted webinar based on those concerns. Um, I, I, you know, during my sharing, during webinars and also my videos, I also encourage teachers to think about playful learning and um, gamification approaches in um, reaching out to the students and hopefully 
uh, they would be able to engage the learners at the same time, increasing the interest in learning from home. Because we know the challenge of uh, reaching out to students at home is that they have so many distractions uh, at home and it will be very hard for teachers to actually engage them. So I introduced several uh, you know, videos uh, guiding teachers on how to use gamification uh, approaches and ideas in how to incorporate playful learning and all that. So these are some of the things that I've done uh, for the past one year until now, in fact. So I'm going to just show you a bit like, for example, on this is the my YouTube channel. And on the left here, you can see it's actually uh, one version of escape room that I shared with teachers on how they can use tools like Genially to uh, create escape room for fun uh, learning, you know, for playful learning. And students are, are more engaged in a way instead of answering questions in the format of, um, you know, textbook snapshot and all that, they would be able to engage in a more engaging, they will be, you know, engaged in a more fun and playful experience in learning uh, the content that the teachers would like them to learn or the skills that the teachers would like to them to practice or inculcate and then i also introduced tools like you know all this uh, uh flippity you know word wall and a lot of tools were into also introduced in my channel where teachers would be able to use them in effectively conducting online teaching apart from using um, google classroom or even whatsapp or telegram that they are so used to so in a way it began uh, last year uh, since March 2020 until now a whole year I can see a really strong interest in adopting playful learning and gamification approaches because they realize that they cannot just teach using a snapshot of textbooks through telegram or whatsapp right so I can see a lot of positive feedback over there the course of one year in fact my channel itself has uh, increased in terms of viewership and also uh, subscribers due to this reason as well so these are some of the webinars that i've conducted uh, over the course of last year in fact i've conducted over 50 uh, webinars in total uh, and close to 100 one-to-one uh, -one coaching session because i have approached about 100 teachers throughout last year uh, for one-to-one -one session and these are done uh, pro bono uh, for free because they I think they need help. What I encourage them to do was after I have taught them, they should be spreading the knowledge to their peers or their colleagues as well. So uh, that's something that I really promote in my session with them. Um, the impact, in terms of impact, I think the first one is really, really satisfying for me because I see a lot of teachers now, those who have approached me, now they are also showcasing how they have changed their approaches in online teaching. I, I saw them sharing a lot online and some of them even uh, send whatever they have done to me just to just to let me know that uh, you know they have changed and of course my videos as well uh, on my channel i think the youtube channel is getting uh, quite a bit of attention i think all the videos are have been watched more than uh, close to 1 million 1 million views i've also seen a drastic increase in my um, videos for teaching and learning uh, apart from other videos I've gathered many feedback, these are some of them, and uh, what I want to tell you is that what I feel the most satisfying part is how they make use of what I have taught them and share it with their peers or with their colleagues. I think that is more important to me than they uh, learn just for the sake of themselves, just for themselves, right? So they, at least after I've taught them, they, they share it out with their peers and also colleagues. So. All in all, I think teachers in Malaysia are getting more comfortable with the online pedagogy and tools, but I would really love to see them implement, you know, gamification and playful learning in the way they deliver their online teaching and learning. And in fact, they can also do it in a hybrid mode uh, when the school reopens. I think that's all from me. Thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.